welcome welcome everyone welcome everybody welcome welcome we're letting everybody in we are thrilled you are here tonight we got a lot of bings happening as people are popping in so just give us a minute but we are so thrilled that everybody's here once you're here please put your name and your school in the chat and give us a little hello maybe tell us one or two things that you've enjoyed from the last couple of days of being together or something that you're looking forward to also because we even have some more more things coming up over the next few days. So please introduce yourself in the chat and let's just wait maybe one or two minutes before we officially get started. I love watching the chat. Oh, thanks, Suzanne. Thank you, thank you. I did think the panel was great, excellent. It's wonderful to see people coming in from all over. You know, we've had a lot of people from um, Southern California, of course, since this is Teach for LA, but we've had people even out of the um, out of state. We have people from Texas. We have people from all over. We have a lot of colleagues from our CSUs that are joining us and our K through 12s. It's wonderful. It's great to see everybody. This is what Teach for LA is. It's about a collective action of all of us coming together. It's a play. It's a space to be educators together. This is an educator community. And we are thrilled that you are here tonight. Let's see. Oh, we are only one minute in. Let's give it just one more minute. If anybody else would like to join us and officially get going. It's wonderful to see everybody. Thank you so much. I love seeing all this in the chat. Great experience learning and growing. Excellent. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This I is a call good this the finale. Oh, I love that. <laughs> David calls it the finale. Here's the bonus piece though, everybody. This is like kind of the semi finale because tomorrow we even have a bonus session coming up that we're going to talk about in a little bit. And there's some events coming up on Saturday as well. So um, wonderful. Our, what did we think? Production team, are we ready to go? It's a go. Okay, excellent. Well, welcome everybody. We are thrilled that you are here today. I'm going to put a few things in the chat right now. Um, just a quick reminder, a lot of people have been asking us about the recordings for Teach for LA. The good news is a ton of recordings and resources are already up. Just in the chat right now, I have put the Teach for LA YouTube channel link, and I've also put the, the link for the CCC TPP website, which is the California Community College Teacher Preparation Programs. All of us who are on right now um, from the community college system are part of that team. And so please go ahead and find uh, find those recordings there. It was really exciting, I have to tell you. Um, with, this, with the tech glitch that we had on Monday night, as a producer, you get really, it's very frustrating when not everybody can be there when they want to be there. And so we tried to email out the recording of the Monday night session as quickly as possible. And I could not believe yesterday, Tuesday, by middle of the day yesterday, we already had 36 views of Monday's night. And so it was just great. This has just been a wonderful community and we greatly appreciate everybody being here. Wanted to remind you also that we have our flip book. I'm going to put this in the chat right now too. And um, the reason why I mentioned the flip book is Actually, let me share screen quickly because I want to remind you about this flip book. You know, we send so many reminders so everybody uh, knows to constantly be checking in on the sessions, but this flip book was designed by Leah Martinez and it literally has every single day of the conference. So you want to keep this as a snapshot. You want to keep a record of this URL because it lives and we want you to make sure that you have this to um, reference in the future. So that way, if you're writing up something for a class or you're like, wait a second, I know that that presenter was awesome and I want to reach out to them. What's their name? What's their college? You're going to be able to find that information in here. I also want to point out, I'm going to flip pretty quickly because we've gone through all of these sessions. Look what we've done already. Unbelievable. But here's the extra bonus piece right now. On the left hand side that you can see right this minute, we've got the special bonus conference session. This is happening tomorrow. Tarek Smith is a leader in restorative justice. And if you're interested in equity, culture, children, and just how do we do this right? <laughs> this is a session you're gonna wanna go to. So I hope you can join us tomorrow from four to 5 p.m. I also wanna point out on the right-hand side that this Saturday, El Camino College has an open um, event for anybody who's interested. They bring in a panel of all these different experts from education, and you get a chance to listen to them, ask them some questions, and really just get a sense of, you know, what are all the types of careers that happen in education? Maybe you know you want to work in a school, but maybe you don't want to be a teacher. So maybe you want to learn about being a school uh, psych, excuse me, 
a school psychologist or a speech pathologist or a school librarian. This is the place where you can go to find out more. So please consider going to the best event that happens on Saturday, the Behind the Education Scene Talk, and um, that's on the right-hand side. I also want to point out that tomorrow there is a future teacher student panel happening at Long Beach City, excuse me, um, I almost said Long Beach City, Megan, at um, CSU Long Beach. And so maybe Cal State Long Beach is one of the schools that you're considering transferring to, or maybe it's a place you want to work out in the future. So, or maybe you just want some information about, you know, being a student and what it means and being a student teacher and how to have some life balance. Please consider checking out that session tomorrow. That's also in your flipbook. I also want to share that on the left hand side on Saturday there's the road to teaching conference that our colleagues are putting on it's at SAC it's free it's virtual so if you can be part of any part of that day we highly suggest that you go that's happening on Saturday November 20th and that's also including a, a keynote from the 2019 National Teacher of the Year which that's a wonderful opportunity to have a chance to hear somebody like that speak. I do want to mention the flyer that we have in the flipbook on the right hand side. On Friday, there's an annual convening for teacher preparation leads. So anybody who's on that is currently faculty or staff at a community college, maybe you're in the counseling department, maybe you work with teacher preparation students. There's an event happening on Friday. You do pay to attend, but it's a wonderful, wonderful convening of all of our um, teacher preparation leadership across the state of California. And so if you are faculty or staff working with teacher prep, please consider joining the ACTEP convening happening on Friday. So I believe, I think that's everything we've got in the flipbook. Oh, we also have a flyer about the CPTP program, which is for anyone who's interested in mentoring, um, either as if you're currently in the field and you want to be a mentor, or if you're a student at either El Camino College, Cerritos College, or Rio Hondo College, we have a special mentoring program for you. And so, um, and I have to tell everybody, we're looking for resources to try and take that great mentoring program and scale it into a bigger, um, hopefully more campuses over time, because we're seeing some great data and some great um, just wonderful things with that. And so we want to make sure that more people have access to quality mentors. That is a very important thing in your career development. So I know that a lot of people are interested about two other things that are happening this evening. Oh, and I shouldn't. I should say three things, because first of all, we've got an awesome keynote coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Miss Ariana. We are excited to hear from you. But I do want to mention we have two different surveys we need uh, people to complete. Um, first of all, okay. Um, I see in the chat there's a question about certificate. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. So let me keep going with this. Um, so right now in the chat, I am putting up two links that I need everybody to do. The first link is your opportunity drawing. That is what is happening right now. I need everybody to log into that opportunity drawing link and quickly put in your information. So that way I'm going to be able to put you into the, onto the wheel of magic in a little bit. The name of the wheel of names. Right below that link, we have the conference survey and certificate request. Now we've decided we were doing the certificates totally different this time. What we need everybody to do is fill out your conference survey. If you want a certificate, there's a box on there that you check and say, I want a certificate. And here's how exactly how I want my name spelled on the certificate. Please don't give me a nickname. Please don't, please don't. One of the most frustrating things is when somebody will put something down and then I generate 450 certificates that I individually email to people. And then somebody goes, oh, I want this other name on it instead. So this is about professionalism. And you, if you would like a certificate, you need to do the survey and enter your name correctly into the section that says, what do you want your name to be on the certificate? The other thing too is I just mentioned, I literally create the certificates and email them one at a time to people. And tomorrow I actually have to drive to uh, Central California and I'm gonna be there for a couple days. So realistically, people will receive their certificates emailed to them at the start of next week. I will try to get them through as fast as possible, but it will take some time to generate them and send them out. So, um, but everybody who wants a certificate can get one absolutely. And I will make sure that I email that information out um, via email as well. So if you have any friends who aren't here or anything that you know, you're worried about, don't worry, we will have you taken care of. So just wanted to get a couple bits of that um, house cleaning over with real quick. And then I want to also, do a few minutes of some thanks. I first want to start off 
by thanking Leah Martinez, because Leah Martinez really is the foundation of Teach for LA. She started it. This is her baby, and she's allowed us to continue it and to try our best to, to keep it as good as we can. And so, Leah, we appreciate you for your inspiration. We also appreciate you for creating the flipbook because by you creating a professional conference guide for everybody, it just helps everybody involved and we really appreciate it. Um, I also wanna give a shout out to both Leah Martinez and Bobby Becca because they are literally loading recordings as we go. Bobby and I were texting at like 10.30 last night. We take this very seriously, everyone. And so um, thank you so much for your quickness, your response in terms of getting it up on the CCC TPP website and for getting it up on our Teach um, LA uh, YouTube channel. Everybody subscribe, please. I also want to give a shout out to Leah Martinez again and Megan Komplinski because they have served as our conference planning committee and has helped us with everything from start to finish. And I'm so grateful. And I also want to mention Yadira Ariano. Yadira is our leader in the strong workforce program in the, in the South Coast, excuse me, in the Los Angeles region. She is an inspiration. There's a reason why we ask her to be our keynote. Um, she's a wonderful leader and we are so grateful for everything that she does with this conference every time. Um, Yadira, one of the things I'm most grateful for is that you put your trust in me as the producer and allow me to kind of create what I, what I think it should be. And I, I'm deeply appreciative for you. Teach for LA is an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to learn. Over the past couple of days, we've all developed as educators. This is like Teach for LA is a time to come together and be part of a community, an educator community. I hope right now that you feel so good about your experience being part of Teach for LA. And please know it doesn't end tonight. You know, right now is our closing session, but it also is important for everybody to know that we keep going. We have opportunities and resources all the time. And our entire goal is to bring quality programming to future teachers and current teachers, because all of us are educators and we've had a lot of bumps in our roads, in our journeys. And if we can help people to not have so many bumps or jump through so many hoops, or if our stories can help to inspire and motivate, um, well, it's like the best job anybody could have. So I hope that we model that for you. I know that everybody's exhausted right now. We are too, I'm not gonna lie. Think about Yadira and where she is in the semester right now as a professor, right? But we still show up. So everyone right now, you are on the final stretch for your semester. We are on the final stretch for 2021. Thank you for showing up. We know what you have committed to by being part of Teach for LA. And we are so, so grateful for you. I also want to put in the chat. Oh, I love it. I'm now just looking in the chat. I can't, I shouldn't look because I'm going to start crying. So I can't do that. <laughs> but I do want to do a direct plug right now in the chat for the session that's coming up tomorrow with um, with uh, Tarek Smith because he is fantastic. Uh oh, let's see. Uh oh, it's not working at this minute. So I will try it again in a moment. It's so weird how stuff can like easily go in chat sometimes and then other times it won't. So it might be too much information that I'm putting in at once. But this, um, when Yadira starts talking, her keynote, I will go ahead and I'll get it, I'll adjust it and get it in there. Um, sorry about that, everyone. I agree, Marini, he's your husband and he is fantastic. So now we have the opportunity to listen to our most wonderful keynote. Now, before we get to Yadira though, I have to remind you, we need you to do the opportunity drawing survey this minute, because when Miss Ariano is talking, we are going to be entering those names into the wheel of names in order for the opportunity drawing. So if people show up late, it gets really hard for us. So please do that opportunity drawing right now, um, or please do the survey right now. And um, while you are working on that, I'd like to read just for a moment about Miss Ariano. Yadira Ariano has been a child development faculty in the Los Angeles region for nine years. She's taught dual enrollment for three community colleges serving four high schools. Yadira brings a wealth of experience teaching, excuse me, teaching college courses in a high school setting. She's a first generation graduate and was an AB 540 student while attending, e while attending ELAC, e -Los, East Los Angeles College. Yadira's background as a non-traditional student has helped her connect with her students and motivate them to continue their education. Yadira is an experienced presenter with a demonstrated history of working in the, field, in the education industry. 
She's a leader in teacher preparation, and she is currently the lead of the Teach Los Angeles Regional Collaborative. Yadira has an AAT in child development from East Los Angeles College, a bachelor's degree in child development from University of Laverne, and Yadira has a master's degree focused in human development and family studies from Pacific, Co Pacific Oaks College. Yadira is a leader, an inspiration, and she's an agent of change. Let's welcome Yadira Ariano, our Teach for LA keynote speaker. Welcome, Yadira. Thank you, everybody. I, that, you're so sweet, Renee. And I, um, I think most of you were here on, on Monday. Um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about my journey here, just very snippets, because I think I spoke about it on Monday. But uh, I really do want to give thanks to all the team here. Um, I know Renee speaks highly of you know, me leading the region and, and, and all this work, but I want to say that this cannot be done without the support of the whole team. And when I talk about the whole team, it's not just me. So to make a conference, it's a lot of moving parts. And I want to let you all know that it was a lot of the work from Renee. Um, and she doesn't like to uh, pat herself on the back, but it was a lot of the work from Renee. Uh, Leah, the biggest commitment, we always get her for the flipbook. If those of you who are interested on the flipbook, we have Leah Martinez, who is our flipbook person. We no longer go with anybody else. Anytime we have a conference, Leia knows that she is the flipbook person. So if you guys want any um, you know, designs like that, Leia is your person. Um, so this conference couldn't be done without the team. So I want to Thank, uh, thank the whole team, which is everybody from the region, Renee, Megan, Leah, and everybody, Marini as well, because Marini is part of the uh, region and all of you here. Um, so thank you, thank you. This couldn't be done without you. Um, with that said, and you know, I wanna just call out that we had an amazing presentations in this past few uh, days, but I think one of the ones that really, really hit home for me was the one we had with the CARE Collaborative, which is uh, with Lisa Wilson and Kim Barker. And I think that they're here now and I just really wanna uh, give a shout out to them and thank them for uh, you know the, the work that they're doing and for everything that they represent. So thank you, thank you so much. Those of you who attended, you know what I'm talking about. It was emotional and it was uh, striking and it's a change that we need to, um, we need to do. So with that said, um, I want to just kind of give you a little snippets about myself. For those of you who did not hear us on Monday, I am an AB540 student. I uh, came to the United States when at the age of eight or seven. I don't clearly remember anymore, but uh, it took me a long time to get adjusted to the system. Um, and when I say adjusted to the system, it's a system that does not work for all students, okay? The system is not meant to make us succeed. Um, and I say that very bluntly and very clearly because that is what happened. The system is not designed to help our students, our non-traditional students. And I'm talking about students like myself who uh, you know, cannot speak English perfectly or maybe we don't have the best writing skills and students who have to work in order to be able to provide or you know, we can't take four classes at the same time. We, we have to take two and then work. So that's what I mean about the non-traditional students. And so in my journey, um, in my educational journey, I couldn't do this by myself. And I said that on Monday and I'm gonna repeat it again. It, it does take a village because I didn't get here by myself. Yes, I worked hard for it. Yes, it was a lot of work, but along those lines, I had a wonderful professors. I had wonderful mentors that I still look up to. And you know, it was a lot of the work. And I think a lot of that work really came from East LA College. It was where I went to school and every time that I'm in a meeting and I think my team knows, um, I always say, I, I come from East LA College. If I work there and I went there, I can do anything. Um, and it is the truth because I learned a lot at the college. I learned how to work. I learned how to be a student. And so um, I don't say that lightly. So to all of you here who are from ELAC, thank you so much because I always say it and I, I, I don't, I'm not embarrassed to say it. I do come from ELAC, I'm a product of ELAC. But um, with that said, I'm going to share with you guys a little PowerPoint that I have, because if I don't share with you, I'm not going to keep track of my talking and I will talk forever. Bear with me, guys. I wanted to be fancy. Um, and so, you know, um, so with that said, we, we learned a lot on these conferences about teaching about equity change, about how to become a better teacher, what to do in the field and how to do things. And so I wanted to really talk about the successes. And I spoke a little bit on Monday about, you know, it took me a long time to get where I am. I never thought in a million years that I would be sitting here 
and talking to you as a professor. I never envisioned myself in that in, in those shoes because I never believed that I deserve to be here. And I spoke about the imposter syndrome on Monday and I really wanna to touch base again on that feeling. Uh, I have colleagues here with me who can resonate with me, who can share my experience because we come from different cultures. And it is such a true feeling. And those of you here and those of you who are my students, I know that you feel it, but I wanted to make sure that I touch base that you will succeed, okay? You might not be where you want to be right now, and you, you're still struggling, and you're still working to be a better person or a better student, but you're going to get there. And success doesn't come easy, okay? I've learned that success is going to require a lot of failures, a lot of falling downs, a lot of uh, obstacles you're going to have to face, and that success is going to come at the end. So, you know, there's no, I can't sit here and tell you, oh, to be successful, um, do all your work and stay up at night and up to two in the morning because it might not work for you. So success has to be defined really about yourself. What makes you successful? What do you think makes you successful? And we all have different lives and different things that we're doing. So whatever worked for me might not work for you, but you've got to find something. There has to be something that you're working towards, right? And there, there has to be a reason why you're here. And so I want to tell you, just keep, keep focus on that reason. Keep focus, on, keep working for that goal because you will reach it. And I think sometimes, majority of the times, our students feel like, you know, you're not going to make it. There's so many things happening right now. The pandemic hit, you had to work, you know, maybe you had to let go of a class and you feel like you're not going to make it, but you will. You got to keep working at it. Um, success doesn't happen in a day, okay? And I think one of the things that I've learned now is that success for me is to see this happen. This is a fruition of my hard work. You know, having this conference, seeing all my students in the workshops, this is success to me. And success is going to be defined to you by something else. Maybe success to you is you finished your homework or you finished this paper that you were supposed to turn in last week, but you couldn't turn it in. So celebrate every success that you do because I think that we don't celebrate it enough, okay? Hey, guess what? You did all this conference, it's 7 p.m. at night. You probably haven't even had dinner. So celebrate that. You're here now, you made it to this conference, celebrate it. And I think we don't, we don't do that often, right? We look at success as this big thing or something that we have to accomplish at the end. But if you celebrate yourself for every little thing that you do, you're gonna feel motivated. Now. The difference, like I said, uh, of where you are now and where you will be, it's going to depend on really on you. So don't focus on, okay, you know, I want to be a teacher. I think a lot of students tell me, professor, you know, I want to be like you or I want to be a professor. And I tell the students all the time, I just didn't graduate and become a professor the next day. It doesn't happen like that. I've had a lot of students tell me, professor, um, I got my bachelor's degree. Okay, so where do I apply now at the college and where? You know, and I, I always tell them, do the work, do the community work, go out into the field, volunteer, uh, get a mentor, uh, you know, shadow somebody, do the work because you can graduate, but you still have to do the work. You're not going to graduate and then become a professor the next day. So that's my recommendation to you. Uh, today, we spoke about equity, and I really want to focus on this because I, be, I felt so motivated after Lisa and Kim's uh, presentation. And, it, and it's something that it's, it's really close to me because I've been, I was one of those students, okay? I was one of those students in the system who I didn't have equality, okay? And I did have programs that helped me succeed and help me, but the system still doesn't have all the programs for all the students. It's not equitable yet. And I wanna take this to make it your colleague. After this conference, and after seeing the shortage of California and the teachers that we don't have, this is your calling. This is the time for you to take action, okay? To make a difference. We're seeing that a lot of our students cannot resonate. They don't see the teachers and they don't look like them. Look at elementary schools. We don't have a lot of male figures in elementary schools, okay? It's majority run by women and there's nothing wrong with that, but we need more representation. Or look at your professors. How many professors that you know you know, are colored or low income or come from a first generation or were undocumented. There's not a lot. So we need you to make, make that change. We need you in the classrooms because when students look at you and they see that you represent them and they see that you look like them, guess what? 
they open themselves up for learning because they can see you and you can see them. I like to always talk in my classroom about, you know, uh, when I have my students and I, I like to tell you, I see you. And when I mean, when I say those words, I see you, I really mean it. That means that I see your struggles. I see how you're struggling in my class. I see you have your camera off because your babies are all around you. I see that your mom is calling you on the background and I can hear her screaming and you're embarrassed and you mute the Zoom. I see that your brothers and sisters are all over you and you have one computer. You're sharing all of these things, I see you. So I always tell my students never feel like you're not part of it. And so that's where I wanna talk to you guys about is really look at everything that you've been through in this conference, everything that you've learned. You're here because you're thinking of becoming a teacher. So when you become a teacher and when you go into the field, always think about, you know, what kind of teacher are you going to be? And I know I sound like a broken record because I know I see some of my students, but, you know, are you going to teach with your head or are you going to teach with your heart? Because there's the big difference. And I think today Lisa pointed out on something and she played a video and I don't know if you guys were there, but there's a big difference when you do it from your heart, when it becomes your passion. It's a huge difference. It's like breathing you do it naturally. And I want to say that for me, that was, that's what teaching is for me. It's, it's not work. It's my passion. I take it like an everyday thing. It's like breathing. Um, and so I enjoy it. And because I enjoy it, I can help my students and I, and I see you guys in my classroom. So the uh, teacher, the California teacher shortage is real. Okay. We're seeing it more and more. And because of the pandemic, and because of everything going on, we have more of a bigger problem. This is a time for you to step up. This is a time for you to really realize and see, you know, if this is something for you, are you passionate for it? Are you gonna make a difference? Because after we leave, let's say for example, years come, right? And we're gonna retire. I'm not gonna be here. Maybe Renee's not gonna be here teaching anymore. Who's gonna take over the region? Who's gonna make these conferences? It's you guys you guys that are here. So you need to make that change, okay? You need to step in, step into what your calling is. And I always say, follow your passion, okay? Because when you're passionate, your work, you can tell. You can tell when you do the work. You do it, it doesn't even feel like work. I sit here now um, and I can tell you I am so blessed because it is seven o'clock. I've had a very, very long day. It is the middle of the semester. All assignments are due and all of you guys, I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna call names, but all of you guys decided to turn in work just right now, okay? The beginning of this week. And um, I guess what? I'm gonna have to grade that before Thanksgiving because I refuse to sit on Thanksgiving and grade. But I don't see it like a job. I know what you're going through. I know how it is. I was a student. I know how many of you guys procrastinated. How many of you here? probably had my assignment and you just decided to do it this weekend. I know all of you probably did. So I've been there, I know what you go through. And to me, it's, it doesn't bother me again because it's my passion. This became my passion and I love doing it. So my hope is that you do become the change that you want to see, okay? And I think in one of the sessions, somebody said um, and spoke about becoming the teacher that you never had. We all had teachers like that. I know that all of us here um, had a teacher that made a difference. Majority of us are here because we had a teacher who made a difference or an impact in our lives. And we still remember them. Or we had horrible teachers, right? I can tell you about Ms. Nava, who was my first grade teacher and who uh, didn't pass me to second grade because I had just came from Mexico. It was, uh, uh, I was six or seven. I don't know, they did an exam for reading. And if you don't know how to read, you get held back. When I came to the United States, my mom moved so much that I was never more than two months in one school. So I didn't know how to read English. So in the first grade, I got held back. I you know, did my schooling in Mexico and it wasn't until this one teacher and his name is Mr. Guerrero and he was uh, the, the first grade teacher and he spoke Spanish. And he said to me one day, you know, and he said it in Spanish and he said, um, do you know how to read in Spanish? 
And I remember telling him, yes, I do, because that was my language. And I started reading a book. I remember the book was Frog and Toad in Spanish. And I started reading it. And it was because of Mr. Guerrero. He walked me, I clearly remember, to the principal's office. And he asked that I be changed to second grade because I didn't belong in first grade. And so it was because of Mr. Guerrero that I can sit here and tell you that made a difference. It made a difference because if I would have stayed in first grade and I would have been differmented how I was by Ms. Nava, I don't think I would have had the passion that I have now. Not only that, I went to college and in college I had wonderful professors. And I'm gonna sit here and tell you, I had actually one professor. I remember it was in East Valley College. And I remember going to, they have like this huge area where you do uh, sign up for um, college events. And we had it in the front of the quad. It looks very different now, but where administration is now, that's where they had the fair. And that was the ASU student. And I went there and I remember this little teacher standing in a stage screaming about the inequalities of early childhood education. And she had a binder and she was so passionate and that struck me. And that professor was Professor Benavides. And I remember that day clearly because I signed up for child development after. And I remember seeing her passion and just feeding off of everything that she was teaching. So that teacher made a difference. After taking a class with Ms. Benavides, I went in on and I just started doing child development courses. I took Maria Rivas, I took, um, Ms. Uribe, there's so many teachers that I took that impacted me. And still to this day, I remember everything that they did that I liked in their class. And guess what? That's what I do. Those of you in my class who are in EDU, on those check-ins that we have, those open Zooms where I tell you to share your thoughts, how you're feeling, do a check-in, that comes from Julie Benavides. We used to go into her classrooms and she didn't come in until probably 15, 20 minutes after, but we had already spoke with everybody. We had gathered with everybody. We were talking with our classmates and then she started teaching. Those of you who also have me for Child Development 104 or 102, when I talk about Piaget and when I talk about the community and the importance of the child, that comes from Maria Rivas, okay? And those teachers taught me so much and I took everything that I learned from my instructors and I use it in my classes. So to you, I'm telling you, whatever it is that you take, whether from my class, whether from other professors, take what you, what you need, take what you liked, and when you become a teacher, you implement them. So you become the teacher that you needed, and that's how you make a difference. Now, I don't, I don't wanna sit here and tell my students to say all nice things, but I hope that in my classroom, when you come to my class, you feel seen, you feel empowered and you feel like you can ask me anything. And I always, I have this open policy in my classroom where I tell you, I am the professor, but I know, I don't know everything. There's going to be things that I don't know the answer to, but I, you know, you can be assured that I will find them out with you. I will. I'm not perfect. I'm human. Okay. There's times where maybe you emailed me and I haven't responded to you in four days, five days, but I will respond to you. I'm so inundated that sometimes I forget to um, respond back to you. I think maybe some of you, I think I've called you the wrong names. I had a student, oh, let me see if she's here. I was calling her a different name the whole semester. And then the last day she tells me, professor, that's not my name, my name is this. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, the whole semester you didn't say anything. And she said, well, you said it so eloquently and with so much passion, I just left it like that. So, you know, and, and, and I, I felt so graceful because that is your name. And she just, you know, she just took it. So with that said, I really want to leave you with that. I want to leave you with the thought about, you know, what does education mean for you? Okay. What is, what has education done for you that you feel that you can come back and give back? Because that's ultimately the purpose is for you to give back what is needed in the community. There's children that need you. There's children out there that didn't have the opportunities that you've had, or maybe that are struggling just like you who are gonna need you. And so we hope that you take this and that you join the effort, you become a teacher and that you do the work 
you need to give yourself grace. You need to embrace the efforts that you already made because all of us here made efforts already. You're here, okay? No, it's not ideal. I know that you're probably, you know, you're thinking, when am I gonna graduate? When am I gonna finish? Take it one day at a time. You're doing the work already. And ask for help. Do not, uh, do not get the imposter, don't let the imposter syndrome take you down. You can't do that. And I think for me, that's really what made a difference is I learned to ask for help. I learned to give myself grace. I've learned that I'm not perfect and that is okay. And that I can't do this by myself. I needed help. And so I hope that with this today, you get motivated, okay? That you find the strength in you and that you keep on doing what you're doing. But remember to ask for help. And there's so many resources out here in the campus for you. We have Teach for LA. We have a wonderful program right now, which is CPTP. Um, it's, you know, I, I really wanna, I wanna shout out to CPTP because it is, we are only doing it in three colleges and I can already see the difference it's making in some of our students. Uh, the fact that they have a mentor. They have somebody that mentors them, somebody that they can reach out to, somebody that they can text, somebody that they can say, hey, I'm thinking about going into this career. What do you think? Tell me your thoughts. I didn't have that. I didn't have nothing like that. I had different programs that helped me and, and, and they were wonderful, but nothing like a mentoring program dedicated for you. So with that said, and I think I am done, um, I owe my success to my hard work, um, but to all the people that helped me get here. Um, I held on really tight and I didn't let uh, adversity take the best of me. Every time that I was kicked down, I remember picking myself back up and just remembering what the purpose was. And that was for me to succeed and not have to work like my mom. Um, I come from a single mother who worked really hard, worked two jobs. And, you know, I had to work a lot for my, for what I have now. And so I worked really hard and I asked for help. And that was, that's how I became successful. But I never forgot where I came from. And I think that also helped me ground, helped ground me because I embraced my culture. I'm Mexican. I, uh, my culture can be very, how can I say it? Uh, they give preference to women, to men sometimes. Sometimes our culture is not the best, but I love my culture. I embrace it. Uh, do I want to change some of the things? Yes, I do. Uh, is there a lot of, um, how can I say it? Uh, there's a glass, there is a glass ceiling. It is there. Uh, you know, just getting hired, trying to find a full-time position. There's a lot of things that are happening. Um, that, you know, we're still struggling with and I'm struggling with, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop here. So I see all of you here and I see my students and you guys motivate me every day to strive to do better. So thank you all for coming. That is my speech. Um, and I just want to um, leave it open if you guys have questions and really thank you because it's because of the students that I am here. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Yadira. We appreciate you and all that you contribute. And it's you're just wonderful. Let's quickly open up, see if we have one or two people who would like to ask Miss Ariano a question. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Anybody want to ask a question? Either raise your hand or unmute for a moment. Acabo de estar entonces. I'll unmute. May I unmute please? Sure, David. What's your question for Yadira? Um, Ms. Ad Ms. Yadira, why does it say Ariano Lopez if it's just Ariano? <laughs> That's a good um, question. I think, and I spoke about it on Monday, uh, David, but I will say it again. Um, I actually, and I, I spoke about uh, lessons on Monday and, and not mistakes because I think that failures you know, make us better. But uh, one of the biggest uh, changes in my life uh, happened to me uh, four years ago, five years ago, I divorced. And uh, that was one of the biggest lessons I've learned in my life. So it, it really taught me, um, again, to appreciate everything, to value myself, to value my happiness, to accept myself, 
as I am. And I divorced. That's why I'm no longer Lopez. Okay. And are those braces you have on your mouth? Yes, I do. Okay. I do have braces. I'm taking them off in December. I'm super excited. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you so much, David, for your questions. Does anybody else have a question they'd like to ask you, Dara? Um, I, I, I can go. Great. Um, I would say that um, your words really inspired me a lot, like you motivated me. Um, not only that, but I would say like, have you ever thought about writing a book of like all the experience that you have ever had and like to inspire other people? Because I obviously like I know there, there's other people that are having the same problems that you faced. Um, thank you, Stephanie, for your words. Thank you so much for um, for saying that. Actually, yes, I spoke to a dear friend of mine yesterday and I was talking about um, I had a lot of students email me on Monday um, and text me um, because I spoke about my divorce and I didn't realize a lot of you guys are going through the same thing or facing the same thing or facing the separation and being, you know, being a student, being a woman coming from a culture that is so dear to holding on to traditions. And, you know, and I think for me, because I didn't have a dad, that was really hard for me to accept that um, because I didn't want my son to grow up without a dad. And so I think that seeing how everybody uh, responded to that, I, I, I will, I think I will write a book or I'll write something and share it with everybody. But, um, you're not the only ones. You're not, we're not, we are all going through things. We're all facing things. We're all, um, but we're still human and you're still valuable. It doesn't matter. Um, and I think, and, and I had a, I, I mentioned on, on, on Monday, a professor that I had that I still talk to from Pacific Oaks and her name is Graciela Italiano. And I remember her telling me, you know, until you accept your whole self as you are, and that includes all your flaws. You got to embrace them. And until you do that, you're going to be able to have grace with yourself and you're going to be able to help fix things. And so, you know, uh, so that's why I want to let you guys know it's okay. You're all going through it. We see you. That doesn't mean you're not going to make it. And I think it makes you stronger. It makes you more resilient. So thank you, Stephanie, for your words. Absolutely. I think so. Maybe a blog, I don't know, a, a story. Yadira, you've got a couple questions in the chat. So let's, we'll go to those and then we'll head to the opportunity drawing after. Yeah. So two questions here. Let's start with, did you complete your education bachelor's and master's simultaneously, or did it take many years to complete your education and your teaching path? <laughs> um, it, it took me a long, long time. Um, I was not your traditional student. It didn't take me two years at ELAC. I think I was at ELAC for like six or seven years. Um, and it took me about six years to complete my associate's degree. Be again, in the beginning, because I was an undocumented student, when I went to ELAC, there was no such thing as um, AB540 yet or DACA. That's, that's how old I am. And then the tuition was not what it is now. And so, you know, and remember, I was working at Lingwood Swap Meet, and then I used to nanny. So I had to work a lot to pay certain units of classes. And so that's what made me, it, I took forever. So I took six years, but as soon as I was able to migrate and fix my um, immigration status, I completely did my bachelor's. I did a bachelor's in University of Laverne and it was a cohort base. And I think that's what really helped me. Um, remember I told you guys about programs that really help you. That was a cohort base uh, um, program at East LA College that they took at East LA College. And I think, um, I don't remember what it was called. Was it these stuff? I don't remember what it was called, but it was a program at East LA College that they brought together. It was a cohort. And the minute that we graduated from East LA College, we got into uh, this cohort base where we did classes with a group of cohorts. Yes. Yeah, Derek, do you mind if I chime in to tell them what a cohort is? Because some people yes, might not know. Please. A cohort please. I will tell you, I did my last, ma I have two master's degrees. My last master's degree, I did in, actually both of them I did in cohort. It means that you take the program with the same exact people in every single class. Yeah. 
So it's not like you're going into random classes and meeting all these different people. You're like a group of people that are going to complete mm -hmm. the degree together. And so when you when you're experiencing it with 20 or 30 people and you're all together, your likelihood of in, uh, your likelihood of completing increases substantially. And so cohort models help us to complete faster and to complete um, more solidly. Absolutely. I think it was because of the cohort that I was able to keep up because we became a group of uh, support. And so, you know, we needed help with writing you. It, it really helped me and it really helped me focus and, and finish my degree. So I attribute that to that, to the cohort base. Um, and I think they work, they do work, they work wonders. Um, and I think we were talking about that at El Camino College to try to bring that in. And that's with Janice and um, Dr. Young. I don't know what's happened, but I know that that's something that they want to do. Um, I have, also saw another question. Yeah, or something. I've got it right here. It says, who, this is one, this one's from Jeremy Ramos, one of our favorite students. I love repeat people who come back and get to be in our lives for a while. So uh, Jeremy asks, who's someone that inspired you as well, but you haven't mentioned yet? Uh, you know what, my mother, my mother is really the base of my inspiration um, because uh, she did it by herself. She came to the United States, uh, you know, and thought that she was going to have a life with my dad and it didn't turn out like that. So she was by the age of 21, had four kids undocumented. Um, and my father left her. We, I come from a domestic child abuse um, kind of background and I witnessed my mom uh, being abused. I witnessed how she had to work. I basically became my my brothers and sisters parent because my mom had to work and you know I had to help out and so you know now that I think about it and I think of how much my child means to me and I think I would you know take off the bread from my mouth to give to my child I you know my mother made a lot of sacrifices and I see them now and so I think that's somebody that um, grounds me and somebody that just motivates me. And she continues to motivate me. My mother is a janitor at McKenna College at the moment. And um, I have to write her report sometimes because she has to you know, report that the toilet has a leak. And it's so funny. She calls me during class time because I don't know why she always nails it on the dot <laughs> during my class time. And um, she leaves me messages like, um, I am your mother. I can't believe you. You don't answer me. If I was to okay. die tomorrow, um, you're not, you're never going to hear from me. And, you know, and then when I call her back, she saw like, oh, it's because I needed you to help me write a report. And so, you know, I, now I embrace it. I think it bothered me so much when I was younger, but now I, I, it just, I embrace her because, you know, she's, she is who she is and I am not embarrassed to show her off. She is a janitor. Um, she tells everybody at McKenna College, I am, I think I am a psychologist, a social worker. I don't know what else she said to the other lady, um, a lawyer, I think. And she called me for advice because I told my mom I was taking a, a research class and she thought it was a I was going to become a lawyer. So um, that is, she is who grounds me. She is, um, uh, her name is Araceli and she is like, um, what really motivates me. And still to this day, um, she is, uh, she's not embarrassed to tell me that she is my mother and that she will uh, put me in my place. And she doesn't, well, she says, um, I don't care if you're a professor, you're still Yadira to me and what I say goes. <laughs> Yadira, you, that's wonderful. You've got another one, uh, another question here that's a great one uh, coming in from Alex. Uh, Yadira, if you could tell your younger self something about how you're, about your teaching path that you didn't know then that would have helped you? Like, what would it have been? Um, you know, I'm actually right now that I've been going to therapy. <clears throat> I've had this process of um, healing uh, my inner childhood. And there's been a lot of times, um, I don't want to get, I don't want to get emotional, but um, that's, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that, um, excuse me, I practice really hard not to get emotional. Um, I think just that it's going to be okay that I would tell myself that 
it's going to be okay and that um, we're doing the right thing. Sorry, there. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, and now I'm going to attempt to come back with tears in my eyes. I love it in the chat right now. See, this is what I'm talking about when I say we're a part of an education community, because mm -hmm. I'm watching this. People are literally like, Yadira, we got your back. Yadira, we're here for you. Yadira, thank you for sharing your story. That's what you got to keep around you, everybody, because there's times in education where you feel really alone. Mm -hmm. And so you find your group, you find your Yadira. You find these people that impact your lives and keep them close because that's how you're going to make it through this profession. This is a hard profession, especially right now, everyone. But if you've got, woo, look at those tears coming out. But if you've got your like crew, those people that when you're having the hardest of hard days that you can go back and say, hey, like, or something crazy happens at work. And then you say, Yadira, this just happened. What do you think about? Like, it just makes it so much better, right? Um Oh, I'd like to interrupt and say that Yadira and Renee wouldn't be Yadira and Renee if they didn't cry a little at some meeting. <laughs> and we love that about you. <laughs> I know I, I tell my students, don't um I don't like to talk about certain things because then I start getting emotional with them. But I do um I think it's a um I wanna I wanna let my students know that it is um uh it is real and it's and I always tell them, like, if I made it um, throughout everything, you're going to make it. You are going to make it. You've, you've been through so much. I, that's why I say that I see you and I can resonate with you. So, you know, I know what you're going through and I know how hard it is to speak about it or to talk about it. Um, and so I think, you know, and you're going to have moments like this, like this question. I, I <laughs> Anytime anybody asks me about my childhood, um, I didn't know that our brain does this, but I've learned this. I was taking a course <clears throat> where I learned that our brain uh, goes through traumatic events. And so your brain tries its best not to make you remember certain situations, certain traumas, because it's your brain taking care of yourself. And I, uh, and I, and I speak about it in my um, child growth and development course, when we talk about the child's brain, because it is important that you, uh, you're gonna have moments like this, right? We're, we've all been through trauma. Um, I think we're all going through trauma. There's so many things that we don't talk about, um, but it's important to be able to express your feelings and to feel them. Um, although we, we didn't learn that, I didn't learn that in my culture. Um, you know, if we just, we don't learn that. I don't know, I don't wanna say my culture because I don't know if that's like it is for everybody, but at least in my household with my mom, it was never something we can sp speak about. Um, any type of mental or emotional, it was basically, you're going to be fine, dust it off and go back out there. Um, but it's important that we talk about it. And it's important that we feel our feelings and that we validate them because then you're going to turn to be like me and get asked a question and it's just going to trigger everything. That keeps it real though. And what a great thing to model for our students, especially in a time where their social and emotional and their mental health is at an all time crisis. Why wouldn't we allow people to express emotion? Mm -hmm. And when is it like, why is it not okay to just cry a little bit here and there? You know, like what if we just made it like it's okay, right? <laughs> I guess yes. we're normalizing it, right, Yadira? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I say that in my class all the time. Um, you know, um, I know some of you guys hate my assignments uh, but there's a purpose to my assignments. I've, I've learned that also. Um, I don't like to give assignments that I, they have no purpose to you. Uh, and I think uh, one of them is the autobiography assignment. And I know you guys dread it. Alejandra is looking at me like, I professor. <laughs> but um, it, is a, it is an assignment that I love. I absolutely love it. Uh, it was shared to me by Dr. Young at El Camino College. And it is an assignment that really makes you look into yourself and your childhood. And um, But I, again, I like it because it, it lets me see you as a student and everything that you bring to the table. So that's why I have that assignment. Excellent. Yadira, I think we got, I hopefully got all the questions from the, from the chat. I hope I captured them all. Um, I really appreciate all the comments that people are sharing right now. And please know we're trying to capture chats as much uh -huh. as possible during the conference. 
I'm sorry, you dear. What um, you I have a question. Oh yeah. Um. So I had a teacher in high school who told me that she actually bought her bachelor's degree. Is that true? I do not know of any place that where you can buy a bachelor's degree. Plus, that's highly unethical. Okay. And in the yeah. field of education, like you sign off on all sorts of ethical things. So I wouldn't even try in our industry sector. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. There are programs where sometimes you pay a little bit more and you get to go faster. But Yadira oh. or anybody who's on, have you ever um, heard of a bachelor's degree where you can purchase it? Well, I want to say I purchased my bachelor's degree. I still owe half of my eye and my arm, but I owe it. Like I work for it and I paid for it. So um, that, Maybe that was the reference. And at, that's interesting, Jennifer. Okay. <laughs> like, and that could be the reference too, because honestly, oh gosh, I can't believe I'm going to say uh, this. I guess technically I, you pay honest, money. Yeah. Like I, I got my bachelor's degree in the nineties, in the nineties, right? I'm still paying off loans for my bachelor's degree. Yeah, but my yeah. family didn't have a lot of money to send me. Like we didn't have money to go to college. I, my dad had died. Like it was just me and my mom and my sister. And so sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So maybe that's why they said they pay for their <laughs> bachelor's degree because they're still paying off loans. I hope that's the situation. <laughs> Maria, Maria Rubalcaba said how much she owes. Maria, I'm right there with you. It's okay. And I, I'm thinking of doing my doctorate and I'm going to add more to that. To that list, but that's something I really want to mention to all of you. Um, don't let that be a barrier for you not to go to school. I see it with my students all the time. Um, the first thought that comes to their head is, oh no, it's a lot of money, professor, I'm just gonna wait. And I'm gonna let you know right now, investing in yourself is the best investment you're ever gonna make because you're gonna take your career anywhere and nobody's gonna degrade you. Nobody's gonna take it away from you. It's gonna be yours. And education is the exit out. Um, you know, maybe for some of you, school is not for you. And that's totally understandable too. But for those of you who really like school and who want to finish, you know, we don't come from money. There's no such thing. Uh, you know, at least for me, it wasn't. And I didn't want to let that be a barrier for myself. It was an investment. And that's how I look at it. I look at it like an investment. If I didn't have these loans, then I wouldn't have the job that I have. And I wouldn't be able to pay my loans. If, you know, I didn't go to school, then I wouldn't be able to live where I live, or I wouldn't be able to, you know, travel with my son. There, there's so many things that I'm doing, and I, it's, it's, I'm, it's because of my education, or just seeing things differently, right? Uh, being able to have a conversation with you all, being able to help my students, and being able to be where I'm at, it's because of my education, and because I invested in that. I love what Claudia just said over in the chat too. Let's vote for free universal yes. college and loan forgiveness. Um, I, I We need yes. to do something about this loan problem because it's fascinating. A lot of leadership in our education system will talk about student debt as if it's only the students and they don't understand that all their employees right now have second mortgages that are our student loan payments. Like I could, mm -hmm. I could probably, with my student loan payment, I could probably have like a Bentley or something each month. Like it's crazy, you know, so, uh, but it gets us where we need, where we're hoping to go, like Yadira said to us. And it's an investment, which I think is so important. Important. But as Lisa mentioned in the chat, let's move towards loan forgiveness, yes. let's move in that direction. Yes. Okay. And, the, and let's make some difference at the federal level, everybody. I know it feels like we can't do that. Trust me, we have agents of change who are with you right now that are making differences at the state level and the federal level. So um, we're here for action. Um, excuse me, Yadira, did you, have you dyed your hair a lot? Because I saw your hair color different in the video you sent us. Yes, I did. Um, so I, I have my hair platinum right now. I have my hair up because I didn't have it loose, but I did change my hair. That's a good observation, David. So David, your it, honesty is refreshing. Is, are, is your hair blonde or platinum? Platinum. Right and, now it's platinum. Yeah. But in uh, another it, video, I saw it blonde. Yeah, so it's it's changing colors. And I think because I, I have the lighting too doesn't help it, but the lighting changes the color of my hair. But thank you for noticing, David. Okay. Um, I did actually want to say something about right now that we mentioned the Fed level and the loan forgiveness. That's another thing I want to encourage you to do is become part of an advocacy. Uh you know, join the effort. You, there's a lot of things that you can join. And I'm going to mention the CARE Collaborative because uh, 
you know, it, it, its whole focus is on equitable resources for students, you know, how do we, how do we talk about these difficult conversations and you should start joining um, groups or, or causes, you know, you to make the change. And, and it starts with us. And, you know, with TPP, we do a lot of, um, we travel to Sacramento a lot. Uh, this work is not just conferences. Um, and I think our, our group is gonna let me, you know, or speak on it. It's not just this beautiful conference that we put together. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of uh, back and forth uh, <laughs> with the regional. Uh, and I'm just gonna say it, it's not, you know, teacher preparation uh, is not looked at like a, how do I say it? So that I don't get in trouble. Anybody help me. It's not a priority sector or it's not, it's not a priority sector. And we're hoping that it will be considered one now. It'll be classified as one. Absolutely. And so there's a lot of work behind it. Um, but again, it's because we believe in it. It's our passion. I strongly believe that education does make a difference and that we need to make it better. We need to make it accessible to you at the college level. We need you to have these resources that I didn't have, that maybe some of my colleagues here didn't have. Um, so, you know, we strive to make things, you know, better for the students, for you guys. We want to make sure that you don't go through what we went through. And so that's why we have these types of programs. Um, you know, we, we wish we had different, you know, outcomes or we, we would have done things differently, but we didn't have the resources that you have now. So that's one of the things I wanted to um, um, mention is join a cause, do the change. You know, if you're at a campus, join a club become part of the club because you can do a lot of things in your club, become part of the uh, leadership group, become part of the, you know, go to the meetings, become a student advocate. You can actually, there's a lot of meetings in Sacramento we go to, guess what? There's student voice. Where are you in that? Where are you as a student? You need to actually, represent yourself. Adira, I love that you just mentioned that. Right now at the Department of Education, they're looking for high school students to serve as leaders on a committee that will help to guide education for the state of California. And yes. they didn't have enough high school students apply, so they reopened the application. So there's opportunities everywhere, like Yadira is saying, for all by all means. Yadira, I hope it's okay. I'm gonna transition us now. Are you cool with that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Excellent. There's still a lot of a lot of chat that I want to make sure you get a chance to check out, but I, I know we've got a couple people that are quite excited about the opportunity drawing and I've got all the names already on the wheel spinning in my background, but I have to give a couple quick shout outs before we officially start going with that. First thing, okay, rules for the opportunity drawing. First of all, you have to be present in order to win, number one. Number two, the items will be mailed to you. Some of them will be mailed tomorrow. Some of them will be mailed at the start of next week. It depends on wh who's, who's mailing them out. Um, another thing too, you can only win one time tonight, but if you won earlier this week or at an earlier drawing, it's totally fine. You're absolutely eligible to win tonight. But in terms of tonight, you can win one time. So, um, okay, let's see. Couple other things real quick too. Um, at the start of the conference, I mentioned that opportunity drawing it's not like we have this big pocket of money that we just get to go buy all this stuff and we can't use grant funding or anything like that for it either um that's not ethical and so one of the things that we do is we put the call out to all of our colleagues in the los angeles region and we're like hey who can help so i want to give a shout out to long beach city college megan Komplinski for providing a swag bag and a gift card tonight i want to give a shout out to cerritos college for providing both sets of movie tickets that have been well, one was distributed earlier, the other one's gonna to be tonight. I wanna to give a shout out to Rio Hondo College who's doing surprise gift cards tonight, which I think is so fun. Just wait till you see the cute little graphic we have for that. I also wanna give a shout out to LaShawn Brisson from um, Los Angeles Southwest College and she is donating the Discovery Toys package that everyone will see tonight. Um, my company, Renee Marshall Education, I'm also gonna be buying a wellness package and then I sent out send out a couple little surprise gift cards over the course of the week um, for some people who we just saw a lot and just, you know, just drop a little something in the mail. So I also want to give a special shout out to our Teach LARC colleagues. And I want to specifically do this because, like I mentioned, when we do these opportunity drawings, a lot of times this is coming from people's pockets. And so we had a group of uh, teacher preparation leaders that donated anywhere from 40 to $150 in order to make this opportunity drawing happen. So Doug Huey out of Mount Sac, he's awesome. Thank you so much, Doug, for always helping out and always 
contributing to Teach for LA. I want to give a shout out to Dr. Marini Smith from West Los Angeles College. Marini has been a presenter. She also has contributed to the opportunity drawing and Marini is always a partner and she is deeply appreciated. I want to give a shout out to Wa Pham, who is from Compton College. She's not able to be here today, but she is always a supporter of Teach for LA. Uh, teach LARC and our opportunity drawings. Letty Rojas, who is coming from Pasadena City College, is always one of the first people to donate and say, I wanna help and get stuff for our students. I also wanna give a shout out to Dr. Veronica Allen from LA Mission College. Veronica presented a couple different sessions and donated to our opportunity drawing. And I also wanna give a shout out to Lizette Lopez from Los Angeles Harbor College, who donated to help make this opportunity drawing a reality. So, okay. It takes a community to prepare teachers and guess what we are your community so we are here and we are happy let's go ahead yadira and um let's see or wait megan you have the slide up right sorry i didn't mean to go back and forth there so okay so opportunity drawing what is our first item that we have this evening Doo -doo -doo. Subway. Doo -doo. subway gift card okay so for this one let me go ahead now i'm gonna share screen Okay, I'm just going to discontinue. Sorry, we're going to go back and forth here and toggle a little bit, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Hopefully everybody sees this. I went through already and made sure there's no... Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. I just got a message in the chat that says, guess what? The Coalition for Anti-Racist Education, the CARE Collective, is happy to donate a $50 Amazon gift card to the opportunity <laughs> So how about after all of them, we'll do a bonus opportunity drawing at the very end from the CARE Collective. Shout out to Lisa Wilson, Kim Barker, and all of our colleagues from CARE that are on right now. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, for Subway gift card, $15, our first winner tonight is... Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Maritza Bryson. Maritza, are you here, are you here right now? Is Maritza, Maritza is here. Excellent, okay. Um, are you okay uh, tracking, Megan? Because last time I was writing down too, but you're okay tracking, right? Megan, can you confirm that you wrote that down? I can track too, Renee. Oh, sorry, okay. I've been answering, but I had one thing muted and yes, oh, okay. I'm, I'm ready. Excellent, thank you so much, Megan. Okay, our second item, what is our next slide? We have two movie tickets. This is coming from Cerritos College. Thank you so much, Cerritos. Now, um, also, just so everybody knows, the person who just won, I did not remove your name. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Marilyn, thank you for your patience, everybody. I also already went through to make sure we didn't have duplicates on names. We ready? We ready, we ready? And uh, remind us again what the prize is on this one. Movie tickets? Two movie tickets. So you could go see that really. Oh, I'm sorry. Maritza. Sorry about that, Maritza. <laughs> sorry about that, my friend. <laughs> Teresa. Teresa, Teresa, Ooh. congratulations. Okay, now I'm going to remove her. I, Maritza, once you said that, I realized what I did. And so, okay, let me go back in and put Marilyn in. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Can you tell we're all teachers? Yeah, and this is just, it is what it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maritza, for your help on that. Okay, next item we have. Oh, sorry, sorry, guys, it's me. I'm going, I'm going. I love that wheel too. Just so everybody knows, it's totally free. It's an online thing that we use. Can, can we just give kudos again? Guess who got this wheel? Leah, Leah Martinez. Martinez. She's our tech guru. She doesn't realize. She doesn't. No, think no, 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 no! Don't give me credit. It's Marini. <laughs> Marini. <laughs> okay, awesome. And next we've awesome, got some. It? Thanks. We've got <laughs> Target fifteen dollar gift card. Okay, let me get the. Let me share. Target. Target. I know. What was I thinking calling it? Oh, there's a duplicate, Jackie? Where? R yeah, one of them is capitalized. And then right above, it's, oh, go go back. Okay. Back down. Stop right there. Oh, oh, go down again. What's the name I'm uh, looking for? That's what I don't Rubalcaba. Oh, okay. Let me take. I thought I got everybody out who was duplicated. Thank you for checking that. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. 
Okay, and Marilyn, thank you for giving me your last name. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got you off. I got you deleted on that one. I apologize. Thanks, everybody, for your patience. Okay, now. Okay, I want to make sure everybody's in. Okay, we good? Um, everybody who entered, we had a draw, an end time on the survey, Viviana. So I don't know if you made it in by that end time. Um, I promise you I put it in the chat probably 50 times. So let me add you quickly right now. Okay, Viviana H. Okay, let me get that in. Okay, now here we go. I want to see a double winner. <laughs> <laughs> Roxana Barrientos. Excellent. Congratulations, Roxana. Okay, Amy, I can try to add you in right now. I took the list is directly from the survey. I promised everybody. So <laughs> thank you. Congratulations, Roxana. Congratulations. Okay, what do we have next? Next, we've got a $15 Starbucks card. We could probably all use that tonight, couldn't we? <laughs> okay, let's see who we have got for our $15 Starbucks card. Thank you so much, everybody, for your patience. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Who do we have? Who do we have? Shaika! Yay! That makes me so happy because Shaika has attended so much of Teach for LA. Um, just so everybody knows, we see you. We see who's attending everything, and we appreciate it because we know it's a lot of work. What do we have next? Barnes & Noble. Oh, I love that store. Barnes & Noble, just so everybody knows, and I think I mentioned this on Monday, but I want to say it again. Barnes & Noble gives a teacher discount, so sign up for it the second you're working at a school, almost in any capacity, because certain times of the year, they'll even give you like 25% off of everything. I went one year and did like a ton of Christmas shopping, and I mean, it's a great store. So, okay, let's see what we've got. Barnes & Noble, I'm ready to go shopping. Let's see, let's see who's got that one. Woo, Glenda! Congratulations, Glenda! Okay, is it me? What, but was anybody else stressed out on that one? Like, I'm like, who is it going to be? Because then it like, oh my goodness. It gets me a little stressed out, but I love it. <laughs> what do we have next? The mystery card mystery gift card mystery gift card okay now this is coming out from rio hondo college thank you so much for this donation and let's see what we've got here spin the wheel go rio dallas cobain congratulations that's awesome we want to know what it is. <laughs> oh, okay. So the, I love it that you, you asked that. The mystery gift card is they will have a choice of a few gift cards that they can choose from. And then they'll go, oh, I want to get this one. So instead of like, you know, us being like, you get Barnes & Noble 20, it's, okay, you've got $25. What do you want it for? <laughs> so they'll have a list of a couple they can choose from. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Leah. <laughs> And Amazon. Amazon. I could find I could literally shop on Amazon every day. I try not to, but <laughs> I could. Let's go to the wheel of names. Who else could use $25 right now? Definitely can. Okay, let's see what we got. got accidentally removed see you were meant it was meant to be meant to be oh my gosh that is so cool um jeremy no they are not all gift cards but i'm going to be honest the majority are gift cards and so um 
And I will tell everybody why I have not mentioned this the whole conference, but I'm going to just quickly say it. Um, last time, those of you who attended Teach for LA in spring, we had all these like boxes and all these different things. Um, my 87 year old mom has been very, very, very sick for the last couple months. And so um, within our planning, I said to everybody, I love doing the opportunity drawing, but what I did in spring took me trips to stores that were over an hour away, probably took me about maybe 15 hours to do the opportunity drawing, follow up and whatnot. And I just said, I don't have capacity this time. And somebody goes, why don't we just give out gift cards? We can just mail them in the, in the you know, just in a card. And I was like, is everybody okay with that? And everybody goes, yeah. And so um, the gift cards are in honor of my 87 year old mom. So I could spend more time with her than on the drawing. So I hope everybody's okay with that. Okay, what do we have next? Or did we already do Amazon? We did, right? Yeah. Oh, now we've got the Long Beach City swag bag. Um, Gabrie Gabriella, if you're here, I can add you right now. That's okay. Let me do it. Um, okay, and Megan, could you tell us about that swag bag? Because there's a little bit more that comes there, right? Say that again, Renee? Could you tell them about what else comes with the swag bag? Oh, there's like a Long Beach City College like uh, messenger bag that has a bunch of our logo stuff, apparel sticker, magnet, and good stuff with the gift card. And could you mention what the gift card is? I don't know if I or oh wait, sorry, oh, it's, it's Amazon. There. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. I was just adding um, uh, Gabriella's name. So okay, excellent. Thank you so much. And so this one might take another day or two before it's going to be mailed to everybody. Just so you know, it might be a start of next week that this gets mailed out. So let's go to the wheel of names. Let's see, let's see, let's see who's got the LBCC swag and gift card. Benjamin Lee. Woo! Awesome, Ben. Congratulations. Okay, let's see what's next. Share my screen. Target again. We love Target. $24, $25 at Target. $25 at Target. Now, an interesting thing with Target that I want to point out to everybody if you are an educator or a future educator, you have to check out the dollar bins at Target. At certain points of the year in July in particular, they will stock those dollar bins with, with items that cost one, two, three dollars, and they are often spectacular things for your classroom. Another thing I wanna point out with those dollar bins too, every once in a while they do a major clean out of those. Keep an eye out every time you go to Target. I've walked in there before where they had their entire dollar selection of Dr. Seuss items were marked down to 25 cents each. So you definitely want to check it out. It's one of those things where, you know, you go to Target for all your other needs, but always check out those little bins there because there's magical stuff for your classroom in those. Okay. And then did we already do that? Did I already go to the wheel on this Target? No. no. Thank you, Jeremy, for helping me here. I'm getting distracted because I'm excited talking about the shopping and the dollar bins. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, great, Ben. I'm so glad you won. Congratulations. Okay, 25 at Target. Target, Target. Let's see who we've got. Paula Cortez Hernandez. Congratulations, Paula. Paula, can you confirm you're here right now, too? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Excellent. Oh, no, it's okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. I just noticed that we've had a lot of people confirming in the chat, but um, I want to make sure that we confirm on each one. Okay, what do we have next, Yadira? Here, I'm coming. Mystery gift card. $25 mystery gift card. There should be like a song that goes along with it, shouldn't there? Like... I don't know. I think there's, it should have like a little theme song. I like Come the on, idea. Lamb, make something up. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery gift card coming from Leia. Okay, let's see who's going to win the Rio Hondo. Mis oh, Mystery Music. I like that. <laughs> okay, let's see who's going to win from Rio. <laughs> Stephanie Reyes, congratulations. Congratulations. Excellent. 
I also want everybody to know, actually, maybe I should just do it live. I also just shuffled everybody's names on the wheel now. Okay, so when everybody, oh great, we've got, oh, we're getting close to the end. We've got $40 at Barnes and Noble. $40, you can get a lot with that, which is so exciting. Okay, let me go to share screen. Thank you again, everybody, for your patience as we toggle back and forth between the two of us. We appreciate it. Okay, so on this, check this out, how cool. So literally, you can sort it alphabetically, you can shuffle it, you can add pictures, you can do repeat shuffles. Do you see everybody what I'm doing? So all the names are still in place, but now they've just moved around a little bit. So let's go ahead and we've got $40 at Barnes & Noble. Let's see who our opportunity drawing winner is. Angela Gray, congratulations, Angela. Angela, can you confirm that you are here right now, please? Yes. Yay, awesome. And can awesome. Benjamin awesome. share his address and a private message back to me? I didn't see it in the form for some reason. Oh, great. They, who is it again, Megan? Benjamin. 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 Oh, I got it. Thank you. He just sent. Okay. okay, excellent. You know what, Megan? There were two or three people that I added that didn't do the form. And so we, um, we might have to um, go back to registration or possibly look into it. So I really appreciate you catching that one that fast. <laughs> okay, what do we have next? Oh, one. Oh my gosh, LaShawn sent me a message. She's like, would you guys want some Discovery toys? I was like, are you kidding? Yeah. I love Discovery toys, love Discovery toys. Um, so absolutely, um, somebody is going to get up to $50 worth of Discovery toys, which is, it's. Um, I believe that she has them and she's gonna choose them and send them to you and they're gonna be multi-age if I remember correctly. So um, exciting, that'll be a lot of fun. Okay, let's go to the Wheel of Names. And I saw that somebody just asked for this, literally willofnames.com. How beautiful is that, especially for somebody like me? Because I'm, I'm always like, what well, is that website? It's like that wheel with names. <laughs> so, okay. Um, let's see, let's see. And Yadira, what's our prize again on this one? The Discovery Toys, right? Discovery Toys. Oh, love it, love it. Okay, let's see who's lucky. I mean, everybody's lucky, but let's see who gets this one. Oh my gosh. Okay, and LaShawn, I just, okay, I'm sorry. Jackie Vasquez, you're still on, right? Yes, I'm here. Oh I my literally gosh. want to cry right at this minute. Okay, everybody. Jack, and LaShawn just put that everything in the picture I got carried away, it's actually closer to $100. Jackie Vasquez is the director of ECE programs for the Castaic Union School District. And like 10 years ago, Jackie was in class with me. She was a college student, single mom, who did it on her own master's degree holder just so proud of you so the fact that you just um, went right out jackie wow just makes so me much. very happy thank you thank you it'll impact children positively i'm confident yes so. and you know what i'm always because i learned from the best renee of course you taught me to seek out there for my prizes so during my uh, professional development trainings. I'm always reaching out to Lakeshore. So Discovery Toys will be given out and raffled off at my next PD. So thank Excellent. you so much, including our special ed kiddos. So thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. And thank you so much, LaShawn, for that donation. That's really spectacular. Really appreciate it. Okay. I think we might have one or two more. Is that correct, Yadira? I think so. I'm opening it up now. I believe there's one computer, more after this and then the care bonus. My computer wants to restart. I'm not letting it. Oh my goodness, guys. I just got another text. We have another, we have another $15 Target gift card coming in from Suzanne Edwards Acton and the CPTP, the Center for Collaborative Education team. So we will add that in as well. This is awesome. I love technology. I'm literally getting texted live. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got the $50 Amazon gift card, and this is the one from the Teach for LA group. Next, we will do the $15 Target card from the Center for Collaborative Education, and then we will do the final raffle, or excuse me, not raffle, this isn't a raffle, this is an opportunity drawing. The final opportunity drawing will be a $50 Amazon gift card from the CARE Collaborative. So 
Oh my goodness. Oh yes. Somebody just, or Megan just said, can somebody put CPTP contact information into the chat? Um, if some, Leah, maybe you could do that if possible. Um, if not, Megan, I will make sure I get it to you. Okay. So $50 at Amazon, everybody fingers and toes crossed. I wish everybody could win. I hope that being in the conference, you feel like you have gotten something out of this week. And so thank you for being here. And I hope people continue to go to things tomorrow and go to things on Saturday and just continue to show up. I do have one quote when we wrap. So I want to make sure I share that at the very end of the night. Okay, $50 in Amazon. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Debbie Bryce, Debbie Bryce, are you there? Debbie, are you here right now? Debbie Bryce, are you here right now? Okay, everybody start looking in participants and let's see if we can find, oh, Debbie's here, yay, 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 yay. Congratulations, Debbie, congratulations. Thank you so much, I'm so sorry. Oh no, it's okay, we just wanted to make sure you were here, that's so wonderful. I'm here, I just couldn't find my microphone button. Oh, it's all good. Oh, thank you so much, Debbie. Um, thank you, guys. Of course. Megan, This the gift card that Debbie just won is the Teach for LA Amazon card. And now we'll do a 15, I keep trying to hold them up, but you can't see because I got my virtual background, $15 Target card. And this is from the Center for Collaborative Education, which runs the CPTP grant that we are all, in, or many of us are involved in. So um, let's go I, ahead. Did yeah. you mean the CPTP? I'm sorry? Did you mean the CPTP card or was it? Um, the CPTP, they, uh, Megan asked for a CPTP link in the chat. So maybe we could put the website. So I guess what I'm checking for is um, Debbie just won the care from Lisa and Kim or no? Yes. Oh, no, 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 wait. The Amazon card that Debbie just won is the Teach for LA one. We have not done the one from care yet. Okay, Teach for LA for how much? That one is a $50 Amazon card. Thank and you. Now, and the care is for how much? To care is $50 Amazon, but we're not doing that one yet. We're doing 15 at Target first. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go to share screen. So we've got $15 from Target. I'm gonna after saying Target this much, I feel like I need to go shopping at Target now. Isn't that funny how that works? They know, they know. <laughs> the marketing people know. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Carrie Ziff, Carrie, congratulations. congratulations. Oh my goodness, I was like, God. I, get unmute, unmute. I am unmuted. Oh my goodness, oh. I was like, see, I wasn't going to wait because it's been like four. You got it, Carrie. We hear you and you won. <laughs> I mean, that's why I went something. It was like, in, I was like, it was like a trip to Vegas. And I was like, I oh, wait, and never do anything after that. And then it was like, what? Oh my goodness. What did you win, honey? You want a $15 Target gift card that we're going to make the mail tomorrow. I will definitely use that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yay, Carrie. Oh, okay. So, are Angela, are you sure the message I just got? I just want to confirm that. Yes, I am. Okay, okay, okay. We have a change, everybody. Angela Gray has already won a Barnes & Noble gift card. Angela, would you remind me how much yours is for? Was it the $20 card? It was the 41 it was the okay are you sure angela yes okay angela is a local teacher and she said i'm so happy that i want it but i want to pass it on to a student who needs it more so the Aww. barnes and noble 40 dollar gift card is now back on the table and we will go ahead and we will do that card Woo! now thank you angela that's very very kind of you very generous yeah. I love it. It takes a village. It just goes to show like it takes all of us working together. This is the community we need. Thank you so much. Aunt. That's very sweet, Angela. We've got Kayla Cannon. Kayla, are you on right now? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yay! Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Angela. That is so sweet. Very sweet of you. And congratulations to Kayla. Okay. I believe now, Yadira, we have our final which is a $50 Amazon gift card. And this is coming from the CARE Collaborative, which is the anti-racist education. Um, and a lot of us believe in this group and support this group. And thank you to Lisa Wilson and to Kim Barker for being on right now and for supporting. I appreciate it. Okay, so last, last one of the night. Oh, yes. It's Lisa. I want to... 
I want to say thank you for doing this wonderful work that you do. I'm proud to call you a friend. And I want I want to add one more gift card. So let's do two for 50. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, so this is not the last gift card. This is one of two that will be coming from CARE. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, so our first person who's going to win our first CARE $50 gift card. Elizabeth Martinez, are you on right now, Elizabeth? Elizabeth Martinez? I'll check the chat. Sometimes they're in the she's chat. She's here. She's here. I see it in the chat. Yay. Excellent. And Kayla's going to get, oh, this is beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Congratulations. Okay, now this is our final card. This is $50 Amazon coming from the Coalition for Anti-Racist Education. Um, thank you so much, Care. And after this, we will do a very quick wrap for the night. Drum roll. see judith judith are you on right now yes i am thank you congratulations. so much oh that's wonderful that is so wonderful my friend congratulations oh my goodness so it's the end but it's not the end everybody and that's what's important to note right now you are part of teach for la you are part of a community of people that are here to support you we are here to challenge you we're here to help you become the best teachers you can be. We want to be a resource. We want to be available. You've had all of our emails from us interacting this week. Please don't leave us. Please know that we will have another Teach for LA coming up in spring. Please know that we are happy and proud to bring this kind of programming to you. And whatever we can do to be better, we need you to tell us how we can be better. I am going to do, I'm going to send this out via email to everybody, um, of course, but I have to put it in the chat one more time please, please fill out our conference survey because conference surveys give us data that we can use to get funding so we can keep doing this for free for you. Many places will charge money for people attending a conference. We don't want to do that. So please fill out our survey so you can help us to continue to provide free programming for future teachers in California. So with that, I have a quote to read everybody. And it's a quote that I've read before, not, to, not during this Teach for LA, but it's one that I, I think I shared at the last Teach for LA and it's because we have to, it's powerful. It's from Chaim Gnot. I've come to a conclusion that, actually, let me change it because they, they have, I, I've come to a frightening conclusion. I don't think this is frightening though, but I've come to a frightening conclusion that I, I am the decisive element in the in the classroom it's my personal approach that creates the climate it's my daily mood that makes the weather as a teacher i possess a tremendous power to make a child's life miserable or joyous mm -hmm. i can be a tool of torture or an instrument of inspiration i can humiliate or heal in all situations, it is my response that decides whether a crisis will be escalated or de-escalated and a child humanized or dehumanized. Be the teacher you needed. Be an agent of change. Thank you so much for attending Teach for LA, everybody. And we hope to see you at the session tomorrow and we hope to see you on Saturday as well. Have a wonderful night, everybody. And thank you all for being here. Renee, I want to just thank kind you of so much you. for everyone. Oh, of course, you're. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say so. Um, I had a lot of uh, students reach back to me. What I'm going to end up doing, um, and I wanted to kind of put it. I forgot to put it in the chat because I was doing the raffle. But I am going to be doing a gathering for first gen students or students who this is their first uh, gear. And this is um, because I am part of the collective and it's something I, I, it really impacted me on Monday. I had a lot of messages from students. Uh, so I am going to open a space. Uh, it's gonna be via Zoom and I'm working on a time for everybody, but I'm gonna be sending out a flyer for just to meet up if, the, if you are first gen, if you're struggling, uh, just so we can have a space to meet and we can talk about your struggles and what it is that you need because I feel it's needed. Uh, and um, it will be I will be done. So I'll be sending the information. I'll get your information. And if you're interested, I'm going to put my email on the chat right now. If you're interested in being part of the first gen group.
Um, and you can just email me, but I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do it after December, like once we're done with finals, because there's there's no way, but I wanna have this group um, so that we meet. I think it sounds like a great idea, Yadira, and I think our communities of practice would be happy to support that if we can in any way also. I love it. We all need to support. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. We have your emails, so we will be in touch as different events come up, and we hope you continue to teach for LA and that you continue to join us. Thank you so much, everybody. It's been a wonderful couple days. Again, we want to see you at Terex. We want to see you at the session tomorrow. Please, restorative justice. It's important. I'll send another reminder. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, everybody, and take care of yourselves, please. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, David. Thanks, everybody, for Thank being you here. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't get a raffle, it's okay, because what for? You know what? We'll do more at the next event, okay, David? And maybe you'll get one that time. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow, uh, Thursday, yes. We yeah. have Sorry, Yadira. Go ahead and share with them. That's great information about what what's available at some of the colleges. No, no, go ahead for the, um, tomorrow we have the Thursday one with, um, what is it called? I'm sorry, it's, it's not at the top of my head. The restorative justice. I'll make sure I send it out via email to everybody as a reminder too. So is that one where we have the raffle? Because the Saturday one, I have church. Those ones, are, those ones do not have opportunity drawings. This was our last opportunity drawing for this time. Okay. Um, Yes, Jackie, no problem. I'll stay on a little bit so we can touch base. Jackie wants to touch base with me and I will stay. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.